Hey, good morning everybody. How you doing? It's Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Woodshop and our Sunday evening blog. Well, before we get started, uh, we've got the biggest and most important shout out I think we can probably have in this shop today. And that's uh, Happy Mother's Day to all you ladies out there. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope your weather's better than ours, but all in all I do. I hope, uh, I hope you're spending time with your, your family, your kids, your grandkids. Again, I wish you the best, and I hope you're having a great day. All right, well, on with the story. So what do we have for you this Sunday? We told you in last week's shout-out, uh, midweek shout-out, that we were going to do one of two articles this weekend. Well, in light of the holiday and other things, uh, what we ended up doing was this topic right here. CNC router comparisons. I decided to do the blog this weekend on some of the different CNC machines out there. Uh, next next Sunday uh, for our Sunday evening blog, we are going to be discussing the uh, angled panels that are going to be going up a staircase into my loft, but that's next weekend. Okay. I know a lot of you have probably had these questions. Uh, we... I know, I know in my own shop I did, when I, when I was looking at machines three years ago, I was very overwhelmed, <clears throat> okay? And what I decided to do was do three comparisons to three different machines. We'll discuss them right here, right now, and I'll try to keep this as, as timely as I can, okay? We'll go straight off the blog. Okay, of all the tools I've personally, personally ever purchased, uh, a CNC router was probably the worst for me. There was so much available, and there still is so much available, all right? Uh, which one do I need? Will that one do what this one will? Look at all the features that this one has compared to that one. Oh, my goodness. Do I even need all those features? Uh, what's the warranty? Uh, if my, my machine were to break... Who physically gets to fix it? Am I capable of doing the repairs myself? Uh, and if I can do the repairs myself, how long do I need to wait for those parts, and how long am I going to have downtime or going to be down in my own shop? Okay? If these are questions that you've all asked, well, guess what? You are not alone. Okay? First of all, the equipment is expensive. We know that. Anybody who's done doing research or who has purchased equipment you know that getting into the CNC field is not an inexpensive, you know, endeavor. The education in and of itself, if you're not fluent with computers, you don't spend a lot of time online, CAD's going to be a little bit, a little bit for you to wrap your head around. It's not that you can't learn it, but there is an education required above and beyond the financial factor, okay? Uh, not all the equipment you're looking at is going to come stocked with the features you might be interested in purchasing. Okay? We're going to discuss three machines today. Okay? They all need to meet a certain criteria, though. Okay? And this is where I narrowed these three down. Okay? All of them need to be manufactured right here in the United States of America. Each machine has to come with CAD software, and that software needs to be upgradable. <clears throat> Like with me, I bought my machine with VCarve Pro. I'm already ready, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go up to Aspire. I'm just, the shop isn't budgeted to go get the upgrade right now. So it is what it is. All right. Uh, all machines come with routers and or spindles. And if it is a router, it will be upgradable to a spindle. That I felt was important. Every CNC machine has the ability to utilize a fourth axis. So basically you have, uh, on this machine, it would come off the side. It's basically a glorified uh, lathe at that point, CNC lathe, okay? I did not for it. It isn't here. But I am capable of getting it with this machine. I needed good customer service as well as a forum. And I rely on my forum probably than I do. If I need a question answered, I just pound one of the guys on the, one of the forums I'm in. Uh, Cam Master has the Cam Heads Forum. I also belong to CNC Router Tips as well in CNC World. All three groups are awesome. Everybody helps everybody out. So that to me was important as well. All right. Now the first one we're going to discuss, some of you have probably looked at. For me, 
it was not really applicable for this shop. Not because I didn't like the product. And this is the other thing that we're going to mention right now. We're not here to badmouth anybody's equipment by any means. The three routers that I've chosen meet all the above criteria. However, there are limitations with them. Okay? As with anything in this life, there are limitations to what you have. Okay? All right. Well, the first one here is the ShopBot desktop. It is the smallest of the three routers that we're going to discuss. It has the same capabilities as the bigger machines, just in a much smaller package. And it is more than capable to do fine engravings and, and small woodworking projects, okay? <clears throat> it can handle wood, plastic, composite, and light aluminum. And again, it engraves with all the same precision that the larger machines do, alrighty? It offers many attachments for this, this small little desktop or bench model. It has a full enclosure, a full, uh, I think it's an aluminum and plexiglass enclosure that you can put the physical device inside of. Well, this enclosure would prevent the shop bot from making a real big mess like some of the larger machines, okay? Plus, it also helps to keep your, your router stored in an enclosure that will protect it from you know, dust and, and anything floating around your shop. It does, in fact, come with, uh, it doesn't, I'm sorry, it does not come with, but you can get a fourth axis for it. So you can have a CNC uh, lathe ability with this small little shop bought desktop model. Uh, and also, uh, as an extra, you can get a plotter pen, a drag knife, a uh, diamond drag engraving bit, a 3D probe, a desktop rotary index head, uh, and they also have a vacuum pump system for a vacuum table. So they really do try to cater, ShopBot, they try to cater, in my opinion, to every price and, and, and performance package that they have. You can buy things with, you know, certain things already on the machine. You can mix and match a little bit, I think, with them. They're, uh, they're not a bad company. Uh, ShopBot, I believe you can just go ShopBot.com. I know that they have their own forum. And again, it had to meet one of the four criteria: uh, American-made, has to come with CAD software, a spindle or a router. Both the software and the, the router needed to be upgradable, as well as coming with a fourth axis. All right? Now, the dimensions on the actual movement. Uh, this machine is capable of doing 24 inches on your y-axis travel, 18 inches on your x, which is basically between your gantry, uh, one side of your gantry to the other, and it's got a Z movement of five and a half inches. So, in my opinion, the shop bought for somebody who's looking to do uh, maybe arts and crafts type stuff, uh, flea market, uh, farmers markets, things like that. This is a darn nice little machine, okay? I think it, you can get into it for a little over 6000 I know a little. It's, it's, it is a big bite, I realize that. But all in all, I think that this is a nice little machine. For the fact that it weighs 102 pounds, if something were to go on it, well, guess what? 102 pounds, you can ship this thing, I believe, UPS. So you could physically take the ShopBot desktop model, ship it back to the manufacturer for any repairs, I, however, don't happen to have that. We did in the blog itself, we put, uh, I put all the specifications from the manufacturer's website. So you can go down and you can look at jogging speed, cutting speed, you know, basically your inches per minute. It talks about some of the other packages, all right? We're going to move on to the second router. I happen to know somebody who owns this, all right? Uh, the second router we're going to discuss, the second CNC router, is the CNC Shark. Uh, Rockler carries this, uh, Woodcraft.com. Again, I'm not, a, I'm not affiliated or associated with any of these places, all right? But this is where I found the product when I was looking into buying a machine, all right? Uh, the unit is a little bit larger than the shop bought, the one we just discussed, okay? The shock offers an extra 1.5 inches underneath the Z-axis travel here. And it offers an extra 6 inches of travel on the X-axis. So the space between the gantry is an 18 inches, it's 24. Uh, the Y-axis uh, movement for the shark is identical though to the shock bot, it's 24. It's 
So the shark is 24 by 24 with 7 inches under the gantry and the shop bot is 24 by 18 with 5.5 under the gantry, okay? While not significant, it is extra milling space for you, okay? Now the shark offers up uh, some of the same attachments that the larger machines do, okay? Uh, they have the CNC touch plate, just like my Stinger, where I can come down and touch my plate. And there is a multitude of replaceable dust boots for the Shark. There is a water-cooled spindle kit that you can order and, and put on yourself. I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, an add-on laser engraving module. Now this one, uh, you're also able to buy all your CNC controller boards right through Rockler. You got a board that goes out, you can buy one directly through them, you can swap it out. I thought that was neat. Uh, it does offer a fourth axis add-on, so you've got the diversity of a wood lathe with that as well. Now, the Shark has many variations to it, but when you buy one, I think their entry level model starts out at $39.99.99, okay? So $4,000 get, get your foot in the door. Okay? But they do have a, a good, uh, on their website, uh, they have a good list of uh, additional items that you can, you can purchase. And for somebody starting out, it's a pretty, pretty good entry level machine in my opinion. I've looked at a shark, and like I said, I've got a buddy that owns one. Uh, and he mills things for, for his missus when she goes off to the flea market or what have you, all right? Uh, they start out, like I said, at about four grand, so they are a little bit less money than the, the, uh, the shop bot. Uh, I have no personal preference on either one, but I've, I've seen the shark, and it is, uh, in my opinion, it's a pretty decent built machine for what you get, okay? Some of the things that, uh, some of the specifications... It has an auto edge and auto sensing automatically locates the workpiece, identifies its size, center, and auto locates your starting point no matter how it's positioned on the, uh, the spoiler board bed. I thought that was, that was pretty uh, neat. X and Y homing capability, so much like the initialized function of the, uh, the stinger here. All interlocking aluminum table. Uh, gantry has reinforced plates. It comes with uh, VCarve desktop design software, so it's it's a good entry level CAD software. And you get one year warranty on parts and labor. So all in all, it comes in with a with a decent industry standard warranty. I believe the shop bot comes with one year parts and labor as well. Okay, and then finally, what we're going to talk about last. Uh, I obviously am sitting on it. I own one. However, I don't own the model that we're going to be discussing, which is the Cam Master Stinger 1, the model SR23. It is the smallest of the Stinger models. However, it is the largest out of the three that we have just discussed between the Shop Bot, the Shark, and now the Stinger. Now, this machine is in fact much larger than the CNC Shark. While having a half an inch less under your Z-axis travel, you gain uh, 12 inches on your Y-axis travel. So this machine can do a full 36 by 24 by 5 inches underneath the, uh, the Z-axis travel for the router. That is, a, that is a lot of machine right there. Uh, most of the machines that I most of the machines, I'm sorry, most of the signage that I build on my machine is never over 3624. The, the town signage that I'm doing for my hometown is a, that's a completely different story there. But for the most part, most decorative plaques and most everything you're going to do, uh, our military and creed plaques can be done on a Stinger 1. All of our veterans plaques, creed plaques, uh, law enforcement, firemen, uh, prayer plaques, all this stuff can easily be done on this Stinger 1. Cribbage boards, a lot of the holiday stuff that we do, the gifts that we do for family, everything could technically be done in the Stinger 1. And if you thought about it and this thing was set up on a good enough stand, you could actually probably do some of the big bar top slabs and headboards that I do, provided you can brace everything and you can get it uh, under the gantry 
which for this machine is 24 inches max, okay? The CanMaster line also offers upgrades in very affordable packages. I bought one for this machine, okay? Uh, some of the packages you can get, some of the add-ons are a counterbalance, which is a, pneuma it's a pneumatic arm to help uh, with the lift of the oversized routers and spindles, uh, a fast tool change, which I have on this machine, laser crosshair, which I have on this machine, the much larger NEMA motors I had put in on this machine. Uh, you have your choice with, uh, you can get a nice maintenance kit. Again, these are all additional charges, but they make a maintenance kit specifically for the, uh, for the Stinger line, or probably all the machines. Uh, you can get a handheld keypad, which I, I do happen to have one through US Router Tools. Uh, you can opt for uh, this machine. I wasn't going to do metal on, so I did not go with that big Philonic uh, spoil board. I ended up going with a high density. Uh... I have no regrets with my machine. I do know a young man currently uh, who lives in the same state. I know him personally. He's got a Stinger one with all the bells and whistles on it uh, from a fast tool change to a fourth axis, and he does game calls. and some fancy spindle work and things like that. I went with the Stinger only because of the diversity of the Stinger line. All right, I have no bad words, like I said, about the other three machines. I think the ShopBot has a place. If you've got a shop smaller than mine and you want to get into CNC, uh, the ShopBot or the Shark, the Shark's a couple thousand dollars less, has a few less things on it, but Ultimately, your decision on what you're going to buy is going to come down to you, your wallet, your budget, and what it is you're looking to do. If, if you don't know what you want to mill, please don't go out and buy yourself a machine. You're either not going to have enough, or you're going to have way too much, or you're going to spend far too much. I did six months worth of solid research before buying this. I'm very happy with my machine. Like I said, we've got a three-year review coming up on it. The... Uh, the features uh, of what the Stinger one comes with, we'll touch base real quick with there. It comes with the same 3.5 horsepower Milwaukee router. Uh, I've done all the same work in, in very large projects that some of the bigger shops do out there, utilizing that 3.5 uh, horsepower router, okay? You get a controlled PC with a 19-inch monitor, keyboard, and mouse. That comes stock, well, even with the Stinger one. You get uh, uh, router off and on via G, G code uh, with the controlled PC. Heavy duty precision rails on all the axis. You have limit switches on everything. You have the E stop. You get the Win CNC industrial controller package, which I, I've had other controller packages for the cam end of this, and I do like the Win CNC. Uh, free tech support for the life of the machine. Like I said, I have, a, I have a magnificent group of guys in three different social groups as well as the manufacturer that I bought this from. And you can also get uh, free report, uh, remote support technical assistance. Now, all the machines that we just discussed, the, basically the conclusion for all three of these machines, again, comes down to what you have budgeted, what you are looking to do, what you want to do, and ultimately how much space you have in which to put this machine, okay? All of them are going to range between four and 10,000. The Stinger one fully set up with every bell and whistle shipped to your door, I believe is, is mid to upper 9,000, so we'll say 10 grand, okay? That is one heck of a machine. If ever I was in the market for a smaller machine to yeah, put somewheres in here, I would go with another Stinger. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even hesitate on another machine, okay? It's it's your time, it's your dime, and it's going to be, you know, how much, how much space you have. And there was a lot that went into this shop when we originally decided to do this. So, you know, keep those factors in mind. Please, everybody, go in. There's, a, there's more detail in the blog. Each machine has a positive and a negative, but I don't think for one minute that any of the equipment is junk by no stretch of the imagination. I think they're all very well built very capable machines. I went the route I did because it's me and it's my situation, okay? Well, 
Again, ladies, I hope you are having a wonderful Mother's Day out there. I hope everybody's got, got sun, sunshine. I hope you're with, uh, with those most important to you today there, and uh, your children and your grandchildren. As always, a big shout out, a big thank you to my subscribers and my followers. You ladies and gentlemen, you absolutely are incredible. I appreciate all your support so very, very much up in this humble little shop. We've got more coming up. Stay tuned for our midweek shout out. We'll let you know what's going on for the weekend, but like I said, I'm pretty sure we're going to be on our angled staircase panels, okay? So all of you, enjoy the rest of your weekend with you and yours. Hopefully you're surrounded by all that beautiful family of yours, and we'll, uh, we'll see you for the midweek shout out, okay everybody?